really. But there were some people there that were not all that happy. And they were there for victims' rights. So listen carefully because the crowd tries to drown them out. Here we go to that clip. France, 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 I don't know if you could hear, but we have her here with us today. Welcome to On Second Thought. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, I'm glad to have you. Your name is? Sophia Hollum. Sophia Hollum. Sophia, you were kind of outnumbered by the fans in the media there, but you were there to represent who? I, who? The victim and all victims of uh, sexual abuse. Okay. Do you think most sexual abuse victims go unrecognized? Definitely. Uh, the, the reports are that 90% uh, of the kids never tell anyone. And uh, the number one reason that kids don't tell is because they're afraid they're not going to be believed. So I think in a high-profile case like this, we need to come out and, and show that we will believe the children when they come forward. Because, you know, they're at home watching the news, you know, or they're in the same room, and they understand what's going on. Uh, you know, that's really what inspired me to go out there at the first arraignment was, you know, my children asking me about, you know, what was going on, and, and they were confused by all the fans who were out there supporting what they see as, you know, quote-unquote, the bad guy. You know, they don't understand our justice system, but to them, they say, you know, my son asked me, well, isn't he the guy, you know, who was arrested? You know, why are they there supporting him? So they didn't really understand that. So if a child's at home being abused, they might may see that and think, well, I'm not going to tell anyone because that's going to happen to me. So. But people won't believe them and the fans will turn out. But most people don't have fans like Michael exactly. Jackson. Exactly. And this boy doesn't have a fan club. So. Uh, now, this particular boy, he was supposed to be dying of cancer, wasn't he? The doctors were telling him? Yeah, he had, um, I think it was kidney cancer. Some kind of yeah. disease. And they said, you're not going to live. And Michael Jackson took him out there. He lived on the ranch. I believe his mother lived there, too, in a guest house mm -hmm. with him. He got to go to the Michael Jackson private theater, which is pretty nice. I've seen it. I've been in there. He got to go to the carnival, the zoo. He got happy, and the happiness changed him, and his cancer went away. That's the story we're getting now, isn't it? Uh, you know, that, that's the what we've seen, you know, in the news. I'm not sure that uh, good feelings alone can cure cancer, but it definitely helps to have... Uh, you know, to to feel um, loved and cared about, right. be really be special happy when you're uh, and happy. When you have cancer, correct? Yeah, I, uh, one doctor wrote a whole book about laughing. He said, "Laugh your cancer away." And I can't remember. He's a medical doctor, not mm -hmm. some quack. So apparently, this boy got very happy. Do you think this boy really was abused in any way by Michael Jackson? Well, I think we have good reason to believe that he is, and. You know, it's not for any of us to decide his guilt or innocence. And but I think when a child tells someone that they've abused, they've been abused, that you know, the, it's they're doing the right thing. You know, the police should believe them, and especially when they've received you know corroborating evidence and such, and bring it to trial and let the jury, you know, decide. Wife, when the ex-wife's accusing the dad of sexual abuse, well, you know, there's there's so much that goes down that never gets on TV because it isn't politically correct. But I'm glad you came. I'm glad you had a chance to get your voice out. And I would like to have that other lady back on, uh, mm -hmm. privateparts.com, and give her a chance. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you so much Thank for being here. Thank you. I just also want to tell you uh, that might interest you. You know, you might be familiar with PAS, parental alienation syndrome, which is something. Okay, are you familiar with that? I'm a victim of parental alienation. I have two kids that are being alienated from me. Well, it's a school me. of thought That's in three. psychology about. Um, anyway, the expert on who on this, his name was Dr. Gardner, and and he spent a lot of time, um, like you just say, in divorce disputes and children who, um, you know, that they feel like. Uh, it's to get back at the father, etc. Well, he actually was the doctor who interviewed the first boy from 1993, and he found the boy to be credible. So you're talking about a guy who is the expert in parental not believing children. Correct. Parental alienation syndrome. Correct. So he was, you know, pretty much the expert in. Uh, but is he an expert in child bring... abuse? Is he an expert in yes, child abuse, sexual abuse, like in yes, this he case? Was. Because parental alienation is when one parent carefully manipulates to turn the child against the the the, the other parent. Yeah, he was actually the founder of the I, the school of thought of PAS. So if anyone was going to you know doubt a child, it would be him. And he actually uh, interviewed or had a you know a psych psychiatric interview well, with the first accuser. That's so good. I thought that would interest you. Let's, calm, let's get him on the show. About that. Well, unfortunately, he he died. <laughs> he committed well, suicide. That, it's going to be hard. Yeah. Why would he have committed suicide? I, you know, I don't know. But when? He, when did that happen? Uh, about, I think it was five years ago. Dr. Gardner committed suicide five years ago? I think so. And he examined this boy? No, not this boy. The first accuser. Oh, the first accuser 10 years right. ago. Okay. Well, thank you very much for thank you sharing for having me, Bill. Thank you. And thank you for uh, all you've done for public access television. But thank you for noticing that. Now, folks, I have another clip. You know, there are a lot of cops. If, if those five Korean young ladies were here to do something bad to the motorists, I'll tell you what, the Santa Maria police were there to protect you from those five pretty Koreans Girls all in white. <laughs> You're messing my hair. Oh, sorry. Okay, these are my first socks.